rock. So today's the day I start gutting the van so that we can finally get this dent out. <laughs> Squeaky chair. Ooh. So it's been a little bit since I've actually had a build video, but the time finally came for me to remove the big old dent on the side of the van. And if you follow along with the channel, you know about two years ago, we went on this snowboard trip to Utah and my buddy Nick was driving and we went up to get gas and he took too sharp of a turn at a pump, hit one of the red barriers and put a nice dinger in the side of the van. It's just annoying, you know? This is all part of the adventure. It is, that's good content. And I would have had it fixed right then and there, but because of the location of it and the size of it, every shop I took it to wouldn't touch it because they needed access to the other side of the panel, which was right where my shower walls were, which meant I'd have to remove my entire bathroom basically in order for them to get in there and remove the dent. And that was just for liability reasons. They didn't want to like tech weld anything on there and then cause some type of fire, you know, if there's insulation that they couldn't see. But I finally came to a point where I was like, okay, I want to renovate some things. I thought I'd use the opportunity to kill two birds with one stone. My original bathroom was made of steel sheeting as the walls. And after I took my van and weighed it, I have an overall weight of 8,480 pounds. Damn. I realized the van probably had to lose a few LBs. I thought of ways I could probably reduce some weight and getting rid of those steel walls was one of them. So since I had to pull everything out, I figured I'd remodel my bathroom. So I'm at Greg's, I'm actually in his other bay, uh, his other little garage area. The first order of business is to get rid of this ladder. Now I started out by gutting everything. You know, in order for them to get the dent out, they needed access to that sidewall. So that meant I had to pull all my walls out. And because it's such a tight space, one wall meant all the walls had to come out. Look at that imprint. Oh my gosh. I wanted to kind of like leave the shell of the bathroom there as much as I could and just pull out the interior of it. And so I was able to do that for the most part. I did have to remove some side panels in order to get to electrical and plumbing that I'd have to remove to get the paneling out. But piece by piece, I slowly took it apart. And after about like an hour or two, I had everything out and there was plenty enough space for the body shop to access the interior walls. The dent is right on this framework. It's right behind here. So I'm gonna pull some of this insulation so they can get in there and probably just replace it with a wool insulation. But yeah, it's gutted all the way out. Now initially they had told me the process would take about a week and a half. You know, they'd have it done in a week and a half. And I thought, cool, you know, I'll just stay at my mom slash aunt's place with Rocky and Archer and work on all the other stuff I've got going on and kind of catch up on things because the van is my only vehicle and house. But that week and a half quickly turned into three weeks, which meant I had to reschedule everything. I missed out on a trip. I missed out on a couple videos I was gonna shoot, but things happen and that's just how it goes. So eventually I got the van back. All right, so we're at Greg's and I have my van back. Clearly I'm standing in it. They got the dent out. You can see they welded this all together here and they even painted over my old my panel. So with the dent removed, we got to work. We started the whole process by attacking my plumbing. Something that I've experienced over the past two years of living in the van, when it drops into the teens and lower, my lines have the tendency to freeze. And the first spot that they freeze is behind my main back shower wall. It's kind of like a lot of dead air there. So I wanted to insulate that area better. And so I went and grabbed a bunch of wool insulation. And I also grabbed some of those foam half inch line insulators. And we packed in those open cavities to kind of eliminate the dead air. So once everything was insulated, it was time for me to kind of like go back to my mixer area, all the plumbing there and reconnect everything to the new mixer I had bought. Now I had just gone on like Amazon and found a small like half inch mixer and it had to be narrow enough 
to fit within my inch and a half like walls because van walls aren't as thick as your standard house walls. So initially my whole mixer shower contraption was external. I didn't have it in the walls. It was exposed to give it like this rustic look and that's why I used copper. But one of the issues we ran into when we started to find a way to put my plumbing within the wall this time was that I had a stud, like a cross stud. I don't even know if that's what you would consider it if it's not vertical, but there was a piece of wood that was like an obstruction for my main water line to get to the ceiling or the upper portion of my shower for the shower head. We needed to figure a way to shoot the main shower line up through that piece of wood and then also mount my new mixer within the wall. So my dad came up with this little like scrap metal that he found in Greg's shop. This was kind of a little extra in my opinion, but my dad wanted to try it. He fashioned it up where he put a hole for my main water line, which everything's half inch. We were weakening that cross member by cutting a notch out of it. But with this, this will stiffen it back up and give us all the support we need. Adding that bracket, with the line passing through it, not only strengthened that piece of wood, but also gave us a mounting point for my mixer. So we just mounted that and then I reconnected everything with PEX. I did use a braided line on a portion of it on my hot water line because I needed to work it over, but everything else was PEX fittings. These are super easy to cut, all you need. These little guys. And what I do is I just look through the back there, there's a little gap so you can see your line. And I'll link the products that I use within the description if you want to use something similar or use it as a reference. Now the next thing I tackled before we started sealing all the walls up where we weren't gonna have access to everything anymore was this little niche. This is where I'm working. Am I getting any of that? I don't know. I had about four inches of play in this little area and I thought, okay, I should utilize this. I just took some scrap two by fours Damn it, man. I made it about four inches deep. No, wait, I made it about three and a half inches deep. I think it's about 10 tall by 12 wide. It's not huge, but it will fit all of the soaps and body washes and things that I have. So I put that together fairly quickly. Greg helped me out because uh, I needed another person to help me hold everything. But I put that together. Okay, cutting and got that mounted, and then I leveled it out as best I could. So that's in there now, um, and we're just gonna cover that stuff up tomorrow. Hey, what are you doing? So once we had all the bits and bobs together that were going to be like behind our walls, it was time to start sealing everything back up again. And this time around, I decided to go with fiberglass reinforced panels or FRP sheets. It's this stuff. It has a texture to it. And the four by eight sheets are about 20 bucks at your like local Lowe's or Home Depot. And then for my backer, I just use quarter inch ply again. It's easy to work with and it doesn't take up a lot of space. For most of the cuts, we just used a circular saw. If we had to cut out the little uh, niche, that was with a jigsaw. And then if we had to make any little last minute corner adjustments, I would use my oscillating tool. So after some adjustments and fitting, we got all of our plywood, like backer board, fitted. So this is the way the board will go in. Right, so this is our backer. We've got it marked because it is a parallelogram. It's not a perfect square or rectangular. We got a high side and a low side. Right. We just took that plywood and laid it right onto our FRP sheets traced it as a template, and then put them back into place. So with everything cut, I started to throw my panels up. I'm using black hardened one inch square head screws. Uh, I didn't pre-drill anything since it was just a backer board. I just sank them right in. And when you're doing that kind of thing and you're working in tight spaces and you can't see where your studs are, especially when you know they're not gonna be your standard like 16 on center like you have in a house, you should mark where your studs are so that when you put your paneling up and you can't see them anymore, you know where to put your screws. So I just tacked them all in and then 
it was time to put the sheeting up. They make a specific FRP adhesive. You can buy it in a gallon and they recommend a certain size trowel. I didn't have that size trowel, I just used what I had. They recommend getting like a roller, something to work out any air bubbles you might have. I just used a paint roller and before I put it up, I was wondering on how I was going to seal my corners. I was originally gonna do this. I was just gonna use some white silicone to caulk everything shut, but they make an FRP or vinyl like corner beading and then that's your, your corner. So we're gonna use that instead and I'm probably gonna put caulk in the little track and then squish it in. And hopefully it gives it a nice like seamless look. Hey, do I know you? Yeah. And so I started applying everything to the walls and what I should have done is started from the bottom and worked my way up every time. But because I'm slightly scatterbrained, I was going <laughs> on the top and then going to the bottom and then going to the side. And I kept sticking my head into the wall and getting glue on my head. I keep hitting my head and getting glue on my hat. And this is my favorite hat. But after about like 45 minutes, I had everything in there. And I will say, if I would have just put the panels in there and caulked my corners, it would have been a lot easier. Not to say it would have been the best looking or the most waterproof option, but getting the corner trim in with caulk and then caulking the back of it and sliding it into place was a serious pain. And I ended up making quite a bit of a mess with caulk and glue. But luckily, once everything was in and I started to go back and like clean up all of my mess, it just chipped right off. One thing that I did notice on all these cuts, I don't know if you could see it on camera, but you can tell right there that there is like a metal rub and that's from the jigsaw. Well, you can really see it here. And so now I've got to go and touch that up. So, I guess if you're gonna do something similar, uh, I would cover this with like a masking tape. All right, Let's see if this works better. No marks. Too bad we did the whole thing <laughs> without that. But I had found some 400 grit sandpaper and just sanded it off uh, and it came off like super easy. Okay, so then once I had everything cleaned off, I needed to caulk everything. Yes, I added caulk to those trim pieces as I was putting them in, but I wanted to like triple check everything and make sure everything was sealed. So I hit my edges all over again. You can tape off stuff if you want like a perfect line. You can use a razor blade to get a real sharp edge or a credit card. There's all different ways all these different ways you can do it, um, but I just used my finger and took my time and would clean it off bit by bit and uh, eventually I had everything sealed off. And again, that was just a white kitchen bathroom caulk. So then, once I had my walls and everything in and everything was caulked, I looked at the shower pan and was like, man, this is dirty and yellow. When I had that sheet metal at first, I was dealing with a lot of rust issues which would run down and then stain the pan and then my toilet, my dad made this like copper wrap because we put a riser below it and that would have some rusty runoff of it. So I grabbed this shower acrylic spray paint stuff and instead of like replacing my whole pan and doing that, I just cleaned it as best I could with the cleaning product and then spray painted over it. And so yeah, I taped off my edges and I sprayed it. I think I did three coats and then it did actually look pretty decent. Now it is pretty close to matching my walls. Uh, oh, and while the coats were drying, I did go and pop a hole with like an inch hole saw for my little, little rocker light switch for the bathroom light. And then I sealed the back of that off to like waterproof it with some butyl and silicone. Ta-da! Once that was done, I could finally start putting things back into the shower. Okay, so I'm at the point where I'm gonna need to put the toilet back in. And I'm not sure how many of you who are watching this video have seen my like previous bathroom build video, but you'll know I have this Thetford cassette toilet and we had to put it on risers so that I could get it up high enough over the shower pan to then pull out the cassette from the back within the van. And so I'm using the same FRP sheathing as the shower walls. And I thought, oh, maybe I just wrap it backwards with this one. You know, 
and put it like this so that it's not the same shade but it's close and it's white so that I can cover up this, this riser. Once those were ready, my toilet was good to go in, but before I could put my toilet in, I had to put a hole at the bottom of my back wall to bring my water line and electrical back in so that the toilet could work. I popped another little, I think it was like an inch and a half hole in there with the hole saw, uh, fished those lines through, and then got the toilet back in and reconnected everything. So with that back in, I took my screws and sucked the toilet tight to the wall and the toilet was back in place and my bathroom was basically looking done. But there's a few more things we needed to do to finish it up. Back in, now I just gotta get the paneling back to cover that up and stuff. So I put my shower head back in, which was my old shower head from my previous shower. And then I needed to come up with a way to keep my soaps and everything within the niche. You know, we had the cubby, but we needed like a barrier so that when I'm driving, all my soaps don't come flying off the shelf. And so I had gotten this rod, we cut it down to fit. And the idea was to pop two holes, one on each side of the niche that was barely in. So I still had enough room to fit my soaps and wedge it in there. And then my dad wrapped it in some tape, made it nice and tight, pinned some screws in it. It holds really tight. There you go. It's got tape wrapped around it, so it's already sturdy there. And then we've got some screws holding it in place. And then I went ahead and I like caulked those edges so that it was waterproofed. And then it was time to put some trim at the top of the shower because there was a spot up there that was like van framework that was still exposed. We kind of went with the curvature of the van. And so there's a spot where my bathroom is that the framework kind of juts into the shower itself and we cut the shower walls to go under it so we can get the walls flat up against our studs. But we needed to come up with something to cover that up and so we put some trim in there. It was just some scrap stuff that Greg had laying around from an old kitchen install job he did. He cut it and scribed it to the ceiling and he just took a piece of scrap wood and a pencil and just brrr, dragged it across, put it on the table saw and the jigsaw and kind of did all sorts of different things to match the curves and then it fit pretty good. So once he had everything scribed and like pre-cut, we started to wedge everything up there. We did back everything with that white caulk um, to use as an adhesive and as a water barrier. And then wedged them into place and he pinned them in with some 18 gauge nails. Next. All right. But with that, we had to caulk again. So we found a gray that was somewhat close. It wasn't exact. And he decided to tape the ceiling so it didn't get up on the cedar. And he ran a line and then he cleaned it up with a little chip. I am in a chip. We tried to find the closest color. Not that it matters. <laughs> And then from there, I went back and I used some clear silicone caulk to seal off my the little shower head ring and then my, my shower mixer plate. And with that, everything was like sealed up, the trim was in, and it was time to like finish boxing everything back. And so the last little touches were to throw the door back on, put my paneling all back. We put the threshold back on the bottom of the shower, and that was it. I think that was about it. Got the door back on with my towels hanging and this weird back loofah thing. But there you have it. A remodeled bathroom with white FRP walls. Not too shabby. Definitely a cheap approach. Got my shower curtain up here to keep the water off the door and everything. Toilet's in and working again. And yeah, I don't think it turned out half bad. I think it's pretty nice for uh, a budget shower. I have a nice new shower and I no longer have a dent in the side of the van. So I killed like three birds with one stone, right? 
lost some weight, got a new shower, got rid of the dent. I think overall that FRP stuff is decent. We'll see how it holds up, but working with it was easy. It's easy to cut, it's not super heavy, and it has an okay look. You know, it's not the fanciest of bathrooms that you're gonna see on these nice Instagram van conversions, but if you're on a budget and you want something that is user-friendly, I think it's a decent option. So this is just like the first part of this remodeling thing I'm gonna be doing. I will have several videos coming out here with all the different things I've been tackling over the last few weeks. And it's I've been busy and that's why these videos haven't been coming out too often. You know, you have to put time into <laughs> the work of it all and then there's all the time into editing it all. And I hope this was helpful. I hope you guys got a little bit from this. Even if you're not gonna use all the stuff I used, maybe it'll inspire you to do something else or you can use it as a reference. Cool. If you liked it, hit a like or a subscribe and then the, the bell stuff and things like that so that we can continue to grow the channel and I can continue to make these videos. Thanks for watching and making it all the way through this and bye. Uh, I can't feel my toes anymore. I can't feel my fingers. It is 30, what is it, 38 out? Uh, <laughs> This was a bad decision. And I've been sitting here for 48 minutes. <laughs> this is stupid. I gotta go warm up.